The Cabin at the End of the World is a horror book from Paul Tremblay that came out in 2018. In this story, you follow a family who's having a relaxing vacation at this remote cabin until suddenly their vacation is disturbed by four strangers who arrive, claiming that they need the family's help to save the world. M. Night Shyamalan decided to adapt this story and bring it to film, and it came out in theaters in February 2023 under the title Knock at the Cabin. While in the first half of the film, he ended up staying pretty true to the source material, he made some major changes throughout the second half of the film that really changed the story that was being told. In this video I'm going to be talking about the key differences between The Cabin at the End of the World, the book, and Knock at the Cabin, the movie, how those differences change the story, and which version I personally think is better. Warning, in this video there are going to be spoilers for both the book and the movie, so if you don't want to be spoiled for either of those, click away and come back once you have either read the book or watched the movie. Let's dive in. half of the film, M. Night Shyamalan very closely followed the story that was being told in the book, The Cabin at the End of the World. The setup was very much the same. You're following Andrew and Eric who are vacationing this cabin with their adopted daughter, Wen. Although in the book, I believe it is set in British Columbia. And in the story, of course, it's set in Pennsylvania because these guys ended up living in Philly because it's M. Night Shyamalan. So of course he decided to set it in Pennsylvania. The basic premise of the story follows a very similar path as well. These four strangers arrive, they come, break into the cabin, cabin and hold them hostage and tell them that they need to make the impossible choice to sacrifice one of their own family members in order to save the rest of the world. Even the tiny details came out in the film, like the opening scene, which is so iconic, where Wen is playing out catching grasshoppers in front of the cabin by herself, and Leonard, this huge hulking character, shows up and starts to catch grasshoppers with her. The dialogue that they had was very similar, and even up to when the strangers arrive to the cabin and they knock on the door seven times, which was an important number in the book. That was all followed very closely. Throughout the film, the characters feel familiar. The actors did a great job bringing their characters to life. It felt really engaging. The atmosphere felt right. Dave Bautista in particular was absolutely incredible at embodying this Leonard character who is supposed to be this big, scary looking man who is actually just a gentle giant and is being put in these circumstances where he fully believes that he has to do this in order to save the world. And so he's making some choices that he normally wouldn't. Even with the first half following pretty closely to to the book, there were also some minor differences that came in the storytelling of the film. For example, in the film, the strangers are a lot more straightforward about what they're doing, particularly when it comes to the explanation of why they are killing their own members. In the book, that's left a little bit uncertain for a while. You're just following Andrew and Eric's perspective as well of not really understanding why they decide to sacrifice that first character, why he puts the mask on and kneels down on the ground and the others beat him to death. But in the film, they provide a more clear explanation which was a little bit different from how the book did and they say that with every no that the family gives to saying no they won't make a decision of who to sacrifice they're going to have to sacrifice one of their own and that every time they do that will unleash another plague onto the world that's basically what was going on in the book but it wasn't just hand delivered to you on a platter to understand what was going on so I did feel like that removed some of the tension and some of the fear elements in it as well after that first sacrifice in the movie I felt like you knew the family was pretty safe and it seemed like they could just ride this out to the end of the film, allowing the other strangers to keep sacrificing one of their own, continuing to say, no, we're not going to make a decision out of who to kill in our family and ride that out to the end until all the strangers were gone. And if they were believing that the world actually wasn't ending, then everything was going to be fine. It was just a group of people who were having this mass delusion. They ended up sacrificing themselves and they would be able to walk away as a family like everything was okay, which is kind of how the film played out. But it did make one huge change that was very different from the book. But we're going to get to that a little bit later. Another thing that I thought removed the tension and the fear and the suspense was M. Night Shyamalan decided to take a lot of the violence off screen in the film. Instead of making you sit there with Eric and Andrew and Wen and witness this brutal murder, which seems like it's all for nothing if you're believing that the apocalypse isn't actually happening, M. Night Shyamalan decided to pan the camera outside of the cabin so that you don't witness the brutal murder. Now I did listen to some interviews from M. Night Shyamalan explaining some of the choices he made with the film 
and he said that he decided to take the violence off screen so that this would be more accessible for a larger audience. He wanted everyone to be able to come see this film and not feel like it was too disturbing or too much gore and he didn't want people to feel like they wanted more violence or that it wasn't enough and so he decided to pan the camera, leave it up to your imagination and he thinks that viewers are just going to fill in the blanks in their mind and it will be whatever they want it to be. In the world of trying to make a lot of money at the box office, I understand why he did that but I do think that is going to be pretty disappointing to horror fans who want to sit there and be truly scared just like Eric and Andrew are. I personally wish he wouldn't have made that choice but what are you gonna do? Now let's move on to one of the biggest plot point differences between the book and the movie. If you've read the book, you know that one of the big emotional moments in the story is when Wen's character ends up dying. In the story, there is a moment where Leonard and Andrew are wrestling for a gun and Leonard ends up squeezing Andrew's hands, which makes him pull the trigger and he accidentally shoots and kills his daughter, Wen. That is a devastating moment in the book that completely changes the circumstances for the rest of the characters involved. And it is such a key part of the book, but M. Night Shyamalan decided to not do that. I I was completely shocked when Wen made it all the way to the end of the film. I was sitting in theaters watching the first half, already tearing up, just looking at Wen, knowing I was gonna have to watch her die, and then I didn't have to watch her die. And it was a very strange pivot to make. M. Night Shyamalan says that he knew from the beginning when he first looked at this book that he did not want to make that decision and that he didn't think that worked for the story. He wanted to instead take a different path, which is what he did in the movie. And he says he actually talked to Paul Tremblay about it. And Paul Tremblay also said, that he was originally planning to go that direction with the story the first time he was writing it, but he decided to switch it up and instead have one die. Who really knows if that's the full story? That's what I heard M. Night Shyamalan say. I haven't heard Paul Tremblay's side of how he feels with the different choices that the film makes, but instead of when dying in the film, you watch them ride it out to the end. As I mentioned before, it does imminently play out that the strangers continue sacrificing themselves until all that's left is Eric and Andrew and when Leonard is the last of the strangers to make it in the end of the movie and then he ends up killing himself and right before he does he tells them that they will have a few moments to make the decision or else the world is going to end. By that point Eric has decided that he believes what is going on. He says he feels it. He is convicted that the world is actually going to end and this was all really occurring and so he ends up convincing Andrew to have Andrew shoot him and kill him so that Andrew can go on taking care of Wen and Andrew and Wen end up riding off together. They stop at a diner. They see the news screens. They they realize the apocalypse has suddenly ended. It seems as if that choice did in fact stop the world ending and they ride off into the storm together. After sitting on the movie a little bit more, I do understand why M. Night Shyamalan might have taken this story in a different direction, what he might have been thinking. Wen's death in the book is a pretty significant choice to make and that really does sort of end Eric and Andrew's world in a way. It lifts a lot of the tension from them because at this point they almost feel like what's the point of going on in a world without when anyways and ultimately what ends up happening in the book is they have a similar moment where Eric wants to off himself and make the sacrifice but Andrew talks him out of it and they end up walking off into the storm together and it's left on this ambiguous note of is the world actually going to end or is it not you don't really know but it does end with this note of hope that they ended up choosing each other they chose their love for each other and even in the face of all the chaos going on in the world they could still find each other and their love and choose to go on and live their lives however it was going to play out. Choosing to keep one alive in the movie does kind of keep the tension going because it feels like they have to make this choice for when instead of just themselves, but I don't know. I still wasn't completely happy with that choice and it was mostly because I felt like we just got so many answers in the film and we really didn't get those answers in the book. Let's move on to my final point of the big difference between the book and the movie. And this all comes down to the details. The book was very ambiguous in nature the entire time. You're not hand delivered answers. You don't necessarily understand why the strangers have arrived for quite some time. There is this whole storyline that potentially one of the strangers actually knows who they are and you do not receive the answers to that in the book, but you do in the movie. And by the end of it, you don't know if the apocalypse is actually happening or if this was all some grand 
delusion that these strangers were experiencing together and they came and they did all of this for absolutely nothing. I will say this did upset a lot of readers. There are two big sides to this book. People either love it and love the ambiguous nature of it or they find it absolutely frustrating and feel like the whole book is pointless because you never got any answers. I personally fall in the camp of loving the ambiguous nature of it. I think that so perfectly places you in this experience where you are truly experiencing everything that's happening in the same exact way that Andrew and Eric and Wen are. You don't know if this is actually an apocalypse or not and so in your mind you're forming decisions along with these characters in the same way that they would be. Part of you could be convinced that maybe this is happening because they keep showing you these things on the TV and it's all too much happening to be a coincidence. Another part of you could be more of a realist and say there's absolutely no way this is really happening. These people are experiencing a grand delusion. Anytime you turn on the news you can see some Something bad happening and use that to fit your narrative. They spoke in a lot of vague phrases of what they predicted was going to happen and you could really match that to other things going on. So you really can find yourself relating more to Andrew, more to Eric, or kind of both of them at the same time. And even by the end, you don't get the answer. And so that ends up making the book a lot more about the decisions they make versus whether or not it was real. And it really opens up a lot of conversations that you can have about the book and talk about the choices you would have made in the face of not knowing in the same way that Andrew and Eric truly didn't know what was happening. In the movie, however, you're provided with clear details and explanations for everything that's happening all the way to the end of the film. One key thing is this O'Bannon character that I mentioned. In the book and the film, there is one character in particular who Andrew feels like he may know, and it may be the same guy that assaulted him 13-ish years ago at a bar. He's not fully sure, but he feels like it might be. Eric feels like the guy doesn't really look like that guy, and it might not be him. And in the book, you never know if it really was that guy or not? Was Andrew convinced that it was and that was his truth? Was he lying and trying to trick the strangers to get them to go away to try to like put cracks in what they were saying by convincing them that it was actually all orchestrated by this other guy? You never end up knowing. But in the movie, you do end up knowing and you get the clear answer that it was indeed that O'Bannon guy after all. You don't really know if it was a coincidence or not that he happened to be involved, but you do know it was indeed him using a fake name. And then by the end of the film, once Andrew and Wen are stopping at a diner after they leave the cabin, which has bursted into flames, they end up seeing on the news broadcast that all of the strange things that were happening, the tsunamis and earthquakes and planes crashing, all of that seems to end suddenly, right around the same time that they made the sacrifice and so that does confirm for them that everything that happened was real and then they go on about their lives. I just personally cannot get behind that decision to give such a clear explanation because I just feel like viewers are going to walk away from this film and have discussions about what they would have done with this bias of knowing that it was all real and there really was an apocalypse going on which really changes the conversation if you don't know whether an apocalypse was going on or not. It really leaves a lot of room open for debate for people who are true believers that there's no way it could have been happening or for people who are believers that it definitely was happening and I just feel like it creates so much more nuance in examining the story. I guess at the end of it you're still left with talking about the decisions that they made along the way but you lose the piece of trying to decide if it was really happening or not. So overall, I personally liked the book better. I feel like that's not too much of a surprise. This is one of my favorite horror books of all time, so I'm very attached to this story. And I really appreciate how all the ambiguity really makes you take this journey with the characters with as much information as they have, whereas the movie gives you additional information that the characters did not have. I imagine this is probably going to be more satisfying for the average viewer who doesn't have an attachment to the text and who can walk away feeling like there was meaning and purpose because they get those clear answers along the way but I personally think horror fans might be a little bit disappointed and would have appreciated a more bold take at the end. But that's just what I think. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you've read the book and watched the movie how did you think they compare or if you've just seen the movie I'd really be interested to hear your thoughts on the movie without having any experience of the book beforehand. Either way I think they're both really fun interesting stories to talk about and I'd love to chat about it all down below. But that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!